six and a half years old, I bet your eyes were that wide. My eyes almost popped out of my head. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it was just amazing. Dale Berry. Dale has been to a lot of festivals. He's made a lot of movies. He's sung a lot of songs. Give us a Gene Autry story on this final edition of the, the 18th annual music and film festival that you're particularly fond of, Dale. Thank you, Johnny. My uh, association with Gene was of a uh, social nature. It was uh, I, I never did get to work with Gene. And I'm so envious of you because you did. I just I just hate you. <laughs> I know I love you like a brother, and you know it. But well, you you're one of the most fortunate people in the whole world to say I worked with Gene Autry. Now that's got to feel pretty good, you know. It's got to. I've never so, forgotten a minute of it. <laughs> As I said, my uh, uh, association with Gene was sort of limited because of uh, uh, his business functions and things like that. But I was very fortunate on several occasions to have breakfast with Gene. There was three restaurants in California that he really patronized probably more than any others. One was the... Uh, Old Joe's Beverly Garland uh, Hotel down on Vine Street. The other was a place called Charlie's. Well, Jim Roberts over there knows where Charlie's is. That's where we all used to go. That's kind of a favorite hangout. And the Sportsman's Lodge was another. So you'd always, at, at breakfast time, you'd find Gene usually back in a corner someplace or other. And at that time, I was palling around and running around a lot with Pat Buttram and Monty Hale. The, uh, we were very close. I was really real close with Pat Buttram, who was kind of Gene's uh, best friend. I think I'd be real safe in saying that Pat was and uh, Gene were very, very close. They, they didn't, one didn't go anywhere without the other. And one of them needed to ride home, the, the other one would go get them. And, and they, they took care of each other. They were buddies. They were pals and they were friends. And you can't beat an association like that. And I wanted to be a part of that association. Pat Buckley was always nice enough. If I was in town in California and he was going to meet Gene for breakfast someplace or lunch or dinner or whatever, he would always call me and have me tag along. So he called me one morning uh, to uh, have breakfast with uh, he and Gene and uh, there was Somebody else along, I don't recall now who it was. It may have been Monty Hale. And we were at Charlie's restaurant, and which was a little small hole the wall place. The food was good, but it was always kind of dark in there. And you'd, you'd go in there, and, and people like Gene was not, uh, he didn't mind signing autographs and things like that. But, but he could sit down and eat privately without really being uh, interrupted. So we were sitting there talking back and forth. And, uh, Gene and Gene would tell me stories about some song that he had recorded or written and I'm soaking all this up and I noticed that he and Pat are leaned over sort of whispering to each other about something or other and uh, I know there's something afoot but I don't really know what I, and, they, they, and they're laughing I thought well I'm sorry for sitting there laughing at me about something but anyway sitting just across the way was the ugliest old girl I have ever seen in my life. She wasn't just homely. This old girl was ugly. I mean, ugly. So, Gene nudges Pat. Pat gets up over there and goes and tells this old girl that I've got an old boy from Dallas, Texas over here that just owns half of downtown Dallas. He just got more money than he can ever spend, and he is dying to meet you. He just, he wants me to come up with him. <laughs> Well, see, I don't know all this conversation, because I'm sitting over here, but he's over there, and I see her kind of looking over at me and eyeballing me and sizing me up, and Gene's sitting there really having a good laugh out of this, so... Anyway, they <laughs> they want me to go over and say hello, and, and I'm, I'm kind of squeezed into a corner here, and I'm trying to figure out, well, you know, I don't want to leave this party because it's a good party, but I need to find me a, I need to come down with a flu or something, a real bad like right now, <laughs> and leave. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was 
I'm, I'm a gentleman. I was very social, very nice. And I thanked her and, and, and said adios in about two sentences. <laughs>